<laughs> so we've got everyone's got their character sheets everyone's got a pencil and a razor and everyone's got a notepad uh i think we're almost ready to go what i'm gonna do before i properly get started is i'm gonna do my very best silla black impression uh, as if i were on blind date because <laughs> we're gonna go on a little one-shot adventure today i have prepped for you guys it's set in a classic uh fantasy adventure land that you're probably quite familiar with if you've watched stuff like lord of the rings or played computer games like the witcher or skyrim that sort of thing um so it's going to be middle earth e sort of medieval fantasy land um and it's set in a fictional world that i've created i'm running a couple of other campaigns in it but i'm going to drop you in there and uh you guys are and I'll, I'll give you a sort of introductory scenario so you've got a, i'll give you a, a rough sort of goal that you're that you're aiming for and then it's after that it's totally up to you but first of all we need to know who is in this crazy party so first of all let's go with callum what's your name and where do you come from <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know how to respond to this, Silla. Well, uh, I, I have drawn uh, miniatures for all of you guys based on your descriptions that you gave me offline after our session zero. So, how about I flip my camera and show you the character and you can tell us who a bit, a little bit about your character. Okay, okay, yeah. here we go. So, this you see, contestant number one, is oh, that wow. in focus? That is amazing. That's awesome. That is that genuinely amazing? amazing. Yeah, that's me. That's in focus. So, this is Landris Stromred, the loudest and undeniably proudest and most obnoxious fella you will probably ever meet. He is ex-military. He is not long released from his service, and his service lay, uh, leaving was not amicable. He has dabbled in some militia groups but did not like what they were selling um and his main pro is that he's incredibly great at breaking things his main con is going to be that he's incredibly loud but he is also very loyal to everyone around him very cool landris stromred <laughs> now he is uh, what, what race is he he is a human fighter ex-soldier Excellent. Very good. And can you do your best Landris impression with the eyebrow? Okay. You're going to have to give me a second because I need to adjust the eye. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Look at that. That's amazing. Awesome. Okay. So moving on to, we've gone for the loud. Now let's go for the silent and deadly. Let's move on to Bod. Talk about my character on my farts. <laughs> Here we go. Bod looks a little bit like this it's true i do hang on i'll put my hood up oh, he's off now there's no hold her into the distance yeah there you go twins <laughs> look at that perfect there you go i hope that looks like the character you had in mind it does yes thank you so this is fergus brewster um from a long line of uh, of brewers hence the surname brewster and um, he didn't really go into into the brewing um, career so much. Um, instead, he um, turned his hand to thievery, not just a little bit of thievery, but high quality. He was, you know, he 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 was someone who stole uh, was contracted to steal things. So people um, powerful. Uh, ne'er do wells, um, the the dons of the crime syndicates of this world uh, would pay Fergus to go and steal certain things, whether that be uh, jewels, money, information, even people. Um, but there came a time when uh, Fergus and was was working with someone. Doesn't happen often, but he decided to this time. And, and things went quite quite badly wrong. Um, they were um, 
there were people waiting for them. People knew they were on there. Uh, they were coming for them. And unfortunately, his, his friend was killed. And Fergus decided to go into hiding and took uh, the, the gems that he had stolen at that time and, and left, went into hiding and went and lived at a monastery for some 20 years. Wow, it. 20 years. Well, you know, uh, he's, yeah, yeah. he's a halfling monk, um, so he's, um, you know, he's middle-aged now, but yeah. he's, he's had time to have a good career as a, as a thief and also uh, a long time uh, in the monastery. He's learned a lot of things. Um, he paid his way with the, the gems, some of the gems that he had that he managed to take, and when they ran out, uh, he paid his way um, by, by brewing for, for the monks there. Unfortunately, it turned out that maybe Fergus was drinking a bit more of the product than he was actually... Um, yeah, maybe it might not have been balanced in the books. <laughs> no, so, so as a result, so he, he, wasn't, he wasn't thrown out of the monastery, but he decided it, it was, this was a time for him to, to leave and move on and um, the next chapter of his life. Um, he's um, taken the skills he's learnt as both um, a thief and also his new skills, his kind of more calm demeanour that he has from being at the the, um, the monastery, martial arts skill he's developed and is out now out on the new adventure and may or may not be drunk at the same time. Excellent. So for clarification... <laughs> You are a Lightfoot halfling. That's right. Monk, and your background is, of course, criminal. That's right. Sure. All righty. Very good. So that, ladies and gentlemen, is Fergus Brewster, which means, Jim, we move on to you next. Jim, uh, I hope, oh, I'm a bit, a bit worried about this one because Jim didn't send me any sort of a description alone. There was no images, but Jim is. Can you see that? Oh, that's awesome. That's nice. Jim, what's your name? Where'd you come from? <laughs> I am Thorin Frostbeard, a ranger hillbore, who left my brothers in arms in search of a lost warhammer that was allegedly hidden in the mountains. I returned empty-handed after three years of search, and I suspect. One of my other companion adventurers to know its whereabouts, as I heard that they were once part of a criminal underworld, allegedly part of stealing my hammer from my great grandfather. I have one sole purpose, and that is to get drunk, with me, watch birds, and try and find my hammer. Awesome. And so you are a, a hill dwarf, ranger, and your background is. Outlander. Yes. Cool. And did you guys sort of have a? Let's put you all in the same shot together. By the way, can you see all three of you in shot there? Does can you tell clearly yeah. tell each other apart and that's all focused? Yes. Cool. Um, and so, how did you guys sort of meet as a group? I know that uh, you, you you banded a few ideas about. Were you part of the same book club, or <laughs> it's totally up to you? I think from our multitude of backgrounds all linking somewhat to criminality, I feel like that might be quite a strong link that we know each other through different criminal organisations that we may have looked into for different purposes, may have worked with, or may know because we were part of them. Yeah, that adds up. Yeah, absolutely. You might have sort of one main sort of... Uh, crime boss or something that that has sort of uh got you together at some sort of uh, networking event i think you guys would be really great together um, <laughs> um and maybe uh that's how you sort of cross paths um and maybe after a, a session of heavy drinking and raucous laughter you decided yeah let's you know we'll, we'll be the holy trinity and we'll go off and we'll you know, we'll make loads of money. Um, that works for me, if that's okay for you guys. Yeah, I like that. Cool. So, um, 
a little bit about the uh, setting then you are um after having your sort of networking session in uh, an inn somewhere um along the main uh, trade route in Vicini, which is the name of this uh, sort of continent that, that you're in um you have heard may probably through fergus's contacts that there is a relatively new brewing company somewhere along this um trail this open arm trail that is the the main trade route and fergus you will have heard that they're a pretty new company they're they're um they're they're nowhere near as probably successful or maybe respected as maybe your families did you say your family had a brewing company or yes, that, that yes. you yeah but you also did a bit of brewing at your monastery as well yes um, but you've heard of this sort of indie startup uh, probably trendy hipster uh, brewery that started on the oaken arm trail somewhere craft mead <laughs> craft mead yeah absolutely um really pretentious uh, uh ale and um you've, you've probably sampled some of it it would have made its way up to your monastery um but you've heard tale that they're looking to expand but they've got some issues with trying to grow their company and the issue is to do with quite literally trying to expand their cellar so you've heard that the the lead brewer at this place is a gnome called Davidov Spoonie, and he's got a fair amount of money, but not really much in the way of uh, any sort of uh, know-how going upstairs. But he also is lacking a bit of muscle, maybe a bit of guile to help him out with the issue that he's got expanding his cellar so i think that the three of you have therefore thought this sounds like a pretty simple simple job fergus you know brewing back to front you're 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 our way in and we've got uh we've obviously got landris the tank who can uh you know pick up barrels over his head and just like this and then of course there is uh thorin who also uh, is is known to like his uh, his drink a little bit as well. So I think the three of you make a really good team, and therefore um, I'm going to drop you just uh, off the Oaken Arm Trail, where in the distance in front of you you can see two um, buildings that is quite clearly. Um, with a signpost that, that points off the Oaken Arm Trail to the Wizard's Tower Brewery Company, that is quite clearly this uh, brewery. There's a chimney that's sort of uh, belching some sort of um, uh, smoke, and you can smell the the hops, the, that that recognisable smell of mead and hops in the air. You know you're at the right place. Um, uh, there is, as you approach, you can see a sort of loading bay. There is a vacant wagon there, and you can see the occasional barrel that is sitting in a sort of platform next to the uh, uh, to the wagon. But there doesn't appear to be that many people about outside. What do you want to do? Let's approach the wagon, see what's there. Okay. Uh, okay. Time for our first die roll. Uh, Thorin, make an investigation check. What this means is you're going to roll a d20 dice, and whatever sum you get, you are going to add your investigation skill modifier to it. So this is going to be one of the 18 skills that you've got. I've got negative two for that. So you so you've got minus two in it, but you're going to roll your d20 and take minus two off it. Yeah, I've got twelve, so, so that's ten. Ten. So what, from a mechanical purpose, what what I'm doing here is I have in my mind a a score between zero 
and 30, 30 being almost impossible, one being dead easy. And I decide sort of roughly what you need to beat to, or, or, or depending on what you get, the outcome of the scenario. You rolled a 10, which is, which is okay. You can see um, that the wagon looks like it's um, sitting in the, the, the road, the track. It's not a cobble track or anything like that. It's a dirt track. And it appears that the wagon is sunk a little bit in the, um, in the mud, as if um, it hasn't moved in a while. Uh, you can see that there are some um, barrels on it, but only it's not full. It's, it looks like it, it could definitely take another couple of barrels on there. Um, yeah. You can see that one of the barrels has a sort of uh, a brand on it, as if someone's used like a, you know, like a cattle brand. Uh, I, I, but it looks like they've sort of done that onto the side of the barrel in a, um, and it's in common. It reads, um, Wizard's Whisper and Bod, sorry, not Bod, Fergus. Fergus, could you make That's a, like could you make a history check for me, please? A history check. So you're going to roll a d20. And my d20 out. And you will, whatever you get on your d20, you will add your history modifier. Uh, zero. Okay, so you roll your d20, and it's just going to be a straight up whatever you get. 11. 11, okay. You rack your brains, and you think, oh, you drank a lot of beer in your time. But Wizard's Whisper, you think, yeah, it does ring a bell. Yeah, I think I've had Wizard's Whisper. Might have been a, yeah, quite a quite a session, session mead. Yeah, it went down quite easily. Um, yeah, that's one of the beers that they, that they, they make here. Okay. Um, I mean, what what else can we see? So we're we're at the wagon, which is at outside this brewery. Yeah. So the brewery um, is around. sort of the brewery is kind of like an L shape, mm. and um, there's the, clearly this loading section. There's a platform um, where there are some barrels that you can see, and there's one vacant um, wagon here. You can see that there appears to be up, up on this platform. There's two doors. There's an sort of on this L shape, one um, over there and one over there. Yeah. And the the one that's furthest away from the um, brewery appears to be a sort of um, annexed, almost sort of house, while the other door is clearly a door that leads to a more sort of industrial kind of building. The house looks pretty new. As if it's been attached to this brewery. Um, yeah, there, there, there doesn't seem to be any sort of. You might see the occasional sort of a, a puddle on the floor, maybe from a slightly leaking barrel. Um, Is there anyone else around? There's no one outside, no. But if you um, make, uh, what is your um, perception? Your Plus four. Uh, okay, so I'm not sure if I've asked everybody if I check, but on everyone's character sheet, underneath your um, charisma, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, charisma, there's a passive perception box. Um, what this is, if everyone fills this in now, your passive perception. What this means is if you're not looking for anything, what's your sort of um, how do you what what do you sort of pick up by not without even looking like you're sort of not common sense, but how observant are you without being observant, if that makes sense? And so the way you work this out is it's a flat 10 plus your perception modifier. So uh, Thorin's, for example, would be 14. Got it. And since Thorin was, it was you that asked, your passive perception is already pretty good. It's 14. Um, and I think you would be able to hear that there is sound coming from inside the brewery. And it sounds like it's the sound of um, 
uh, someone's voice sort of giving orders. You can't hear anything from the house. Is there an obvious way into the brewery? Yeah, there's a there's a door on the platform. If you so if you go up the platform, there's a couple of barrels there. Um, oh. next to this wagon, and there's a door. Um, there. Are we going in? Yep, let's go in. All right. Um, who's uh, who's going in first? Landris, you seem keen. I'll go in first. Absolutely. Open the door, nice and wide. You're opening the door. You're not kicking it down to smash it open. You're just opening it normally, right? Let's make a good first impression. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, that's sensible. It comes off in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, Landris, as you open the door, you get a waft of hops and uh, sort of the, the smell of um, alcohol being processed i suppose uh mead i suppose being processed and i assume that is a smell that you're relatively uh, familiar with and probably a smell you quite quite like um, i know some people aren't too keen on the smell of uh, hops but um it's like a walking into a through a, a wall of uh, an odor as you enter and you can see that there's a as, as soon as you walk in, you can see that this is one quite long building that's probably about 80 feet long. And there's quite a bunch of uh, different vats here. And some of them have pipes leading into them. There's uh, a almost like a mezzanine floor to this place. There's stairs that lead up and a sort of, um, like I said, a mezzanine sort of walkway over these hops. And you can see gnomes characters that are probably the same height as your good friend Fergus. Fergus is of course a halfling. I'm You're a, human. a halfling, thank you very much. <laughs> five. Um, gnomes are, uh, from a mechanical point of view, they're a little bit bigger than a halfling, but um, Thorin, you'd be proud to say you are taller than any gnome. Um, so if you imagine that these gnomes are sort of uh, halfway in height distance between Thorin and Fergus and there's a few of them that stood up above these vats and they appear to be stirring them with massive long ladles of some sort and um, there's one guy walking around and he's holding a medieval clipboard and he looks very nervous and uh, he has um, he's noticeably wearing slightly finer clothes than the other gnomes that are clearly working this place and um let me see uh you opening the door he turns around and looks at you and there's a brief moment where he with a bit of a surprise in his face um because you are what, what are you wearing you're wearing uh quite heavy armor right I'm, I'm caked in weapons and i'm wearing massive armor yeah and it's i not... imagine you've constantly got that sort of uh look on your face <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, as you enter the door one eyebrow uh you know you uh, got a shaved eyebrow no that's a scar that's a i scar. was showing off with hand axes oh. uh, we were told yeah that was uh, uh i thought it was um, i imagine that eyebrow <laughs> is is constantly roger maud uh like that um and of course you've got quite a glorious handlebar moustache as well um so uh the gnome turns around and with a slightly nervous look says oh uh, can i help you there friend i shout to him you must be davidov y yeah yeah that's me i'm davidov spoonie and he sort of walks over to you uh after telling one of the guys yeah, yeah don't stop stirring it or you'll ruin it and he turns down the back to you and he says uh uh, I didn't catch your name, friend. Landris. Landris. Uh, I, I, how can I can I help you, Landris? We're here for the job. The job oh. being a seller. Oh, 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 oh. Yes, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. uh, you come on your own, did you? No, I need to step to the side, I'm assuming, for the shorties. <laughs> as you step to one side, I imagine you're just like this, and then as soon as you step to one side, there's yes. It's, oh, oh yeah, I didn't see your friends there. Like and, Russian dolls. Uh, I imagine um, 
I imagine um, Fergus just sort of walks between your legs, um, and uh, <laughs> and um, uh, uh, um, sorry, just a quick quick question. Um, we, we've just established what uh, Thorin, uh, sorry, what um, Landris is wearing. What's Thorin wearing? Uh, I'm wearing a brown leather waistcoat. Sure, and you've got a, a, a long bow. Um, and a quiver on your yeah. back, and you've got two short swords in your in in your side. And um, uh, Fergus, what what are you wearing? So I'm wearing the the robes. The so they are they're actually the robes from the monastery. Um, so originally they were uh, white with leather bits like buckles and around the belt. But when I, just before I left, I um, I, I dyed them with some with some plant dyes to get them darker. So they're they're a kind of grimy charcoaly colour. I was aiming for black. It didn't quite work. So <laughs> it's a bit tie dye in places. It is, yeah, it's medieval tie dye. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's probably all the rage in uh, you know the big cities. Um, yeah. Uh, um, so as Landry steps to one side. Now we can see uh, that you are indeed a trio. And Davidov uh, says, oh, yeah, 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 come in, come in. And I uh, shut the door behind you. Um, he says, uh, you, uh, what, you, you came about the job, the, uh, the uh, expansion. The cellar. Yeah, 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 that's right. Uh, he uh, lets you, waits for you to come in and then he sort of uh, shuts the door uh behind you um and uh he says uh, can i uh so um here's the thing we're quite a new business and looking to expand um one of our sellers uh to you know we we need to to store more beer that people are loving our our aisles have you have you tried any of them and maybe you've heard of uh, uh, Wizard's Whisper, Spoonie's Sip, Manticore's Crackdown. No, none of these. <laughs> you've had them, haven't you, Fergus? Yeah, I've had um, I've had um, a fair share of, of Wizard's Whisper. Oh, um, yeah. I think they could do with toasting their malt a bit longer on that one, though. But it's uh, it's decent enough. <laughs> <laughs> Make a um, make an intimidation check. Intimidation? I was just giving some friendly advice. That sounded like very constructive criticism to me. <laughs> intimidation. Right. Eighteen. Eighteen. Is that including your um, your modifier? Zero. Eighteen. Okay. Eighteen. As you say that, um, you can see uh, Davidov's cheeks flush a little bit. And uh, uh, he he shakes a fist at the guy who's with the ladle. And he says, "I told you we should have done it." Uh, and he starts going off of like off at one. And he almost forgets that you're there for a moment. And he's he's obsessing with the the fine details of how he could he might be able to improve his his beer. And he turns back to you, Fergus. He says, "Oh, so so you fancy yourself a bit of a brew man, then, do you?" Um. I, 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 I know my stuff uh, when it yeah, comes to like production. Yeah. I, I don't do it. Uh, uh, I'm more of a small scale. Small scale. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I only got this place last year. Got it on the cheap. But, um, you know, build it, building, building fast and, and I want to expand the cellar. Um, me and some of the lads got into it at, Bit of trouble when we when we tried to knock through the back wall. Uh, uh, so, some injuries happened, and uh, some let's uh, let's put it this way. And he, he leans in close to you and says in a voice that you three can hear, but in among the sort of uh, hubbub of various other gnomes that are working around, they wouldn't be able to hear. And he says, "We had some uh, <laughs> casualties." If you get my drift. But 
you're here now. And uh, uh, especially the big boy there, he, uh, he looks like he'd, oh, he'd, oh. he had a, he had a bit, of, uh, bit, of, bit of experience in the old boxing rings, boy. Uh, not so much my fists. Anything with two handles and a big blade, that's more my, that's more my style. Oh, serious, serious stuff. And uh, and you there? He points at Thorin. Uh, you know, is that is that for show, or, or can you shoot any, a thing or two with that bow? Um, better when I'm drunk. Oh, you're my kind of dwarf pal. And he uh, he offers you a fist. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> he Who better to help expand your cellar than a than a dwarf? Yes, That's yes. Great at mining. He says so. Um, in all seriousness, no. Um, we we were attacked down there, and these things, they, they, I don't know, they they were just there. As soon as we broke through the wall, they came at us, and we weren't prepared for that. And me and the boys, you know, we, you know, we needed a bit of, uh, you know, the old uh, Vassini courage to to, you know, long long, long hours and all that. Sorry, what? We, can you uh, get to the point here? What are you talking about? What what? <laughs> talking to, Sorry, you're talking to the character. Or to you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, look, look, all right, you're a businessman. I can see that. You you talk you talk tough, and you you know you you know your stuff. Um, I'll pay you to clear out the cellar. What are we clearing out? Well, these things they look like they were the they were like the size of dogs gray gray fur some of them were a bit bitey how many are there of them well we managed to scare some of them back into the hole he says that with a slightly hopeful tone but one look at this guy i think again with your passive perception you would be able to tell that this guy's wearing quite nice clothes and to look, to look at him, he doesn't look like he doesn't have any sort of uh, scars or uh, or any sort of sign that he's actually ever been in a proper fight before. He is a businessman first and foremost. You can see he's got money, but um, yeah. Uh, so he doesn't really. He, I, I don't know what they were. They were just they came out of the darkness, and we sort of tripped over ourselves trying to get out of there but um all right uh, look, look, I, I tell you what look, look i'll pay you uh 25 gold pieces each if you deal with it and uh and uh you there um uh, uh he points at fergus uh w what's your name Fergus. Oh, oh Fergus. <laughs> he says, uh, you, you seem to know your stuff. Uh, clear out the cellar and I'll name my next beer after you. Whoa, 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 whoa. No. Yes, you name the beer yes. after me. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what's your name? What, 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 what could we... Uh, Oh no, you're Landris, aren't you? Big one, just, big one. Just, yeah. just name it Landris. That's all you need to do. Well, to I kind fair. of like to have a bit of uh, alliteration with my names. Land Landris, Landris. Land <laughs> Touche. Uh, <laughs> Landris, this uh, Thorin, this sounds like something you could deal with anyway. Uh, <laughs> Don't have says, to bear after me, but I'll do the job for fifty gold pieces. Fifty. Uh, he said, he said I'll, I'll meet you halfway, and I'll, I'll what about thirty-five each? I'll accept the job if you boys will. Yep. So I'm a beer, one beer, uh, and thirty-five, and ten proper dumbs each. He said, I'll, I'll chuck in a, a, a keg of ale as well for you. I think it's a done deal. Yeah. Uh, well, I've got a, a, a new one I'm, I'm brewing up. Landris, Landris, you can have that. Oh, sounds amazing. <laughs> uh, so, um, 
have we got a deal? He holds his hand out to, he's not sure which one of you to hold the hand out to, to shake. Uh, he, I'll, he... I'll shake his hand. And, I, okay, I'll yeah. shake, and as I shake his hand, I go, off you go, Landris. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I just nod smiling at that point. Just, yeah. yeah. Uh, so he, Davidov, uh, says, oh, oh, follow me, follow me. And he leads you down uh, through the this sort of big um, uh, main brewery area. Um, you're sort of weaving in and out of the occasional uh, big vat and in the back left corner there's a door that leads to a sort of small much smaller room um, you know from gauging from where you said that this is getting closer to the section that would be the the main house and in here there is a small <coughs> excuse me like uh uh, small office slash uh, in this room there's um, some how would you describe them uh, sort of like wooden lock boxes a, a whole uh, row of them maybe a bit like imagine a calax if you will but each of them uh, has um, uh, if you imagine each of them had like a wooden uh, door with a um, sort of key slot on them um and you can see they're numbered um one to 25 in a five by five grid um uh you can see that uh um davidov walks in in here and he he he, he uh allows you in and you can see that there's also a uh a tractor that he then proceeds to lift up with with care, looks down, and uh, and and then he pulls it up, leading down clearly into a um, shadowy dark uh, cellar. I and he says, uh, "I'll uh, I'll be I would go with you, of course, but I don't want to get in the way." Um, and besides, I've got a beer to make for Landris Landris. Um, uh, 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 Fergus, any last tips for the uh, the, the, the flavouring? Toast your malt properly. Yes, yes, sir, yes, sir. Um, uh, Fell up with these pale ales. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, Wizard's Whisper, we thought that would go down really well, but apparently no. Um, well, uh, hopefully see you soon. Goodbye. <laughs> he, uh, he, he takes one last look at the trapdoor and gives you a wave, and then he turns back um, to the main uh, brewery, and you can hear him then. As soon as he turns his attention back to the brewery, he's shouting colleagues to this that and the other you're left um in this sort of um right lock, locker room entrance to the how uh how do you think we should approach this i'm should happy we... to have a look with my night vision and high dexterity i'm happy to jump down and see what i can see down there it's dark so dark um I feel we should get you to find out what's happening down there before we light any torches, just in case there's something that can see better than we can. Yeah, agreed. Uh, okay, so the it's worth noting at this stage, for anyone that might be watching, Thorin, as a dwarf, has dark vision, which means that he can, of course, uh, see in the dark, a bit like a cat in sort of uh, black and white uh, monochrome. Meanwhile, the halfling, uh, who looks delighted at the fact, uh, <laughs> and the human have regular vision they cannot see in the dark. Um, so, oh, wizard's whisper, delicious. <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> so, uh, okay, so Thorin, it looks like you are gonna go down first. 
so uh, the so sorry was someone going to say something no, i'm ready to go oh, okay cool so uh the steps are they're, they're, if you imagine these, these are natural, um, so not natural steps, <laughs> man-made steps, of course, but they're, they're steps that look like Landris. You would probably be able to walk down these, no problem. They might be a bit of a, um, they're, they're, they're human to human scale. So for um, Thorin, I think you would walk down them with as much pride as you could, uh, considering you're not quite as tall as a human. But I think. Uh, if you can appreciate um, uh, Fergus as a halfling, if we're thinking, of course, Lord of the Rings, you are going to be shorter than um, the other characters. These stairs might be a bit steep for you, but you can go down them, but they're just steeper than uh, um, steeper than gnome steps. They're, like, they're more like as if they were probably built by the previous um, occupant of this place. Uh, and I'm going to flip the camera because I'm going to show you what Ferg, uh, what Thorin can see as he goes down the stairs. So let's move this down here. So this is a uh, a grid here. Can you see the, uh, the the squares on here? Yeah. Yeah. Each of these squares can, in fact, can you see that? Each of these squares is five feet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. So if I rub that out. The stairs lead down like this. So you can see back. Can you, uh, aha. I have with me here a really good tool. I recommend every DM gets one. This is a laser pointer. Mm -hmm. So can you see the laser pointer mm -hmm. pretty much at the top of the screen there? Mm -hmm. You can see that? Yes. That is the back wall of this cellar. So it is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45 feet wide by 35 feet across. And here's our favorite frosty dwarf. And in as you come down here, uh, Thorin, remember everything is sort of, you can see everything in sort of black and white. As soon as you went halfway down these stairs, um, probably about 15 steps in total. So you're, you're definitely one floor beneath the, uh, the main brewery. And sure enough, you can see in here, as you look to your immediate left, you can see some barrels. Sure enough, they're keeping beer down here. There's some other barrels over here. These are, these are, Shout if you can't see what I'm I'm pointing up here. There's some here. Barrels. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I've run out of barrels, so I'm going to use these. These, I think, are technically. Uh, is it Playmobil? Yeah, like a milk. Found these. Uh, so they, you can imagine that there are other barrels as well. And uh, there is. One barrel, a couple of barrels here. And if you look straight ahead of you from where you are, your dark vision has a range of 60 feet, uh, Thorin, which means you can, in theory, see 15 feet beyond this point, the back wall. Mm -hmm. so you can see this room. Well, from what you can see of line of sight, remember, these barrels, you probably can't see over these barrels, but you can see... Uh, shadows in among the blackness if that makes sense mm -hmm. um considering you've got dark vision here you can see is a hole in the wall where they the, they clearly blasted the um a, a hole in here and you can see some rubble on the floor and some tools it looks like some tools here and beyond this back wall I'm going to pan up a little bit. You can see, in fact, I'll move the camera. You can see what appears to be a wall that's about five feet behind this wall. Okay. But that, 
that's very much very dark you can barely barely see that so can you just to clarify can you see the room like that yeah yeah cool now remember this is the tricky bit about dnd &D for the likes of bod and uh now just actually this is a good point to mention jim uh you've never played dnd &D before bod you've never played dnd &D before but i wouldn't know that because you're both doing great so far um callum you have played dnd &D before um but of course at the moment this is what thorin's character uh, thorin can see jim can see this at the minute even though i've described it to you all bod can't see this yet does that make sense yeah cool so um you've come down here and you can see this immediately you would see that um on the wall i've got a pen uh marker board here um you would see here you'd be able to see here there appears to be if i color that in can you oh you can't even see that can you here if i color that sort of dot in there can you see that yeah yeah there? that appears to be a sort of and there'd be two either side of you to your left and to your right sort of like um i think are they called sconces on a wall where you'd um what torches uh, uh, sort of where you might have something that would hold a torch. Okay. Um, but they are, they're, they're holding torches, but the torches aren't alight right now. Right. Okay. I think I'm going to, having now gained knowledge of what it looks like, I'm just going to go back and I'm going to tell Landris and Fergus what I've seen. Sure. We're going to make a plan for what's best to do now. Okie dokie. So you're back you. in the locker room. Back in the locker room. I say to Leonard and Fergus, I can see that there's barrels down there and I can see at the end there's a hole, but I can't quite see the hole. And I think it might be a good idea if as a group we all go down closer to the end to investigate with our weapons at the ready. Absolutely. I... Uh... Are you guys okay with that? I, I'm up for, for coming down. Um, are there any torches down there? Should we try and light the torches? Um, just out of interest, do any did any of you guys start with torches in your backpacks? Yes. I have ten torches. Ten torches. Cool. Um, so... Do you have? I assume if you've got torches, you've got something to light them with. Oh, and a tinderbox. Yeah, you've got a tinderbox. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, you could you could certainly light one if you want. Um, Sweet. So I'm gonna light a torch up. Okay. So it was annoying. So in the minute you're still upstairs, the torch, of course, is just a, 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 an open flame. Um, makes no difference to the room you're in at the minute, of course, but um, that'll make a difference if uh, you go downstairs so um the way that torches work is i think they emit a uh light for a certain amount of like um uh, uh circumference uh, sorry radius around the point of the uh um around the point of the torch and you have a torch you this torch will burn for one hour uh, but you've got 10 of them so that's fine and it provides bright light in a 20 foot radius and dim light uh for an additional 20 feet so what that means is bright light means everything's in color dim light means black and white uh, so you can see everything 40 feet in every direction uh, so in theory i just uh for pure uh, hypothetical purposes if Landris were to come down here as far as here you wouldn't be able to see that because that's 45 feet away step forward five feet and you would then see that does that make sense yeah yeah cool okay so Fergus you would either have to stay close to Landris in order to see stuff or do you want to use a torch as well Oh, uh, I'll bring up the rear and uh, stay close to, to Landris for now. Okay, 
Cool. Do, do you have a sort of marching order that you want to go down into this cellar? Who wants to go first? I think um, I'll go first. Yeah. Okay. So I can see stuff clearly. And then if you follow Landris, with Fergus, then you can uh, hold the watch. And I think we should all have our weapons ready. Sure. Sounds good. Uh, okay. Now, of course, this means because uh, Thorin doesn't isn't holding any sort of torch or anything like that, you've got two hands free, which means you could indeed have your bow at the ready. Yeah, I'm going to have my bow. Because it's a two-handed weapon, of course, a bow, yeah. um, uh, which is important because if you were holding a, a torch, you couldn't, of course have a weapon at the ready and have the torch. Okay, so first of all, come down here. We've got um, uh, Thorin. And then I'm just gonna put you like this. And this is your marching order, right? And then we've got Landris. And at the back, we've got Sneaky Sneaky Fergus. Okay. These, um, oh, there's no torches on the walls, are there? Just so, um, sorry, torch. just to clarify. So you've, you, you, would now be able to see everything, um, you guys, because of what uh, Landris has lit up. And you'd see that these these have torches in them, but they're not lit at the moment. Do we light them? Yeah, I think we should light them. Yeah. Okay. Also, are you... Sorry, I should I should have asked you this a second ago. Are you... Did you... How did you walk down the stairs? Did you jump down them? Surf down the banister? Did you tiptoe? Did you just crash down? Landris is definitely going to have crashed down. <laughs> yeah. the, the point is, were you trying to be quiet or were you just walking down normally? I will have walked down normally. There would not have been much thought in, uh, put into it. Okay, sure. Um, okay, cool. So you've walked down there. And yes, you've no got point there. Else saying anything else then, is there? Everyone knows where we are. <laughs> I didn't say that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Landris, you've got a torch, and yeah, I think. Uh, what is your passive perception? My passive perception is thirteen. Thirteen. Okay, cool. So that's decent enough that as you walk down here, I think you would have seen two sconces either side of you. And besides, I assume um, Thorin probably would have told you there are some sconces on the wall. So with that in mind, do you want to light any of them? I like the two by the door that we've passed, but I'm not going to break or uh, break the marching order. Yep, sure. So as soon as you come down, you light both of these. Um, yep. And then yep. suddenly, yeah, there's... So if you imagine, uh, pretty much this now is all quite bright. And then uh, this is dim for you guys. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, Thorin, once these guys light it up, you can, of course, now see this all in colour. Um, uh, you can see that there are the familiar brands on the barrel. You can see there's there is indeed some um, wizard's whisper on some of the stamps. There is some manticores crackdown. There's some spoony sip. There's some that just says TBC on the side. Um, who knows? Maybe that one day that will be uh, Landris Landris. Um, oh, some of them have um, uh, 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 oh, what do you call the um, uh, some of some of them are smaller kegs than others, um, and yeah, they appear to be made of uh, yeah, they're wooden barrels, um, pretty sturdy things. Um, some of them are on there. Some of them are sat like like this. Some of them are on, balanced on their side like this. I think I'm going to try and crack one open and have a few handfuls of beer before. <laughs> OK, um, so you can see that these smaller ones here have uh, Wizard's Whisper on them. Uh, these ones over here appear to have Spoony Sip. And these ones over here have manticores crack down on them i'm going to go to the ones immediately to my right with the wizard whisper on and see if i can crack open the barrel okay uh are you trying to smash it open or are you trying to like uh subtly uh 
uh, undo a clasp or cork or something. I think I'm just going to give it a big smash on the top with my fist. If I can. <laughs> okay, uh, make oh. make an uh, uh, that'll make an athletics check. Okay, that gives me plus two. Oh, hello. I got three plus my two is five. Five. You smack it and your fist just bounces off the wood and you can hear a sort of dong and a, a sort of, a, it's clearly a full keg, but it, it, you, you might not want to tell the other guys this, but that actually really hurt. Um, <laughs> um, uh, you're unable to open it. It looks pretty solid. Okay, I'm very frustrated. I go back to Landers and Fergus and say, before we go any further, I think we should try and crack open one of these barrels and have a few beers to get ready for the fight ahead. Oh, definitely. I'm going to pass the torch that I'm carrying to Fergus. Yep. And I'm going to go over to that exact same barrel and I'm going to give it a good smack on the top. An athletics check, please. Oh, the shame if, if this if this comes off. 18 plus 4, 22. 22. Hey. You, yeah, it, it there's a, uh, were you using your fist? It was a clear fist, just straight exactly down. Exactly the same as what uh, Thorin did. Um Thorin, probably, you probably just loosened it up for him. It's like opening a jar of beetroot, you know. Um, <laughs> um, and as you as you give it a, a crack, uh, Landris, yeah, you um, you s- almost splinter this thing in half, and um, uh, it, 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 and it was like you were just uh, crushing a, uh, a a soggy snowball. It, it, you know, no effort whatsoever. Um, I don't know what that dwarf's moaning about. And you were able to, uh, yeah, yeah, you've got, you've un, un, uh, taken the lid off, and you can see some um, li- uh, some some ale inside. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to go back and take the torch back off of Fergus again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. That, that you'd see actually um, have it inside this little kind of uh, tiny crevice, I suppose here. Um, a series of um, uh, flagons that have just been sort of uh, left on the floor, um, maybe by the gnomes who were down here drinking earlier. Okay, um, I'm going to grab one of those flagons, dunk it in to the uh, the open barrel. I'm going to turn around and grab one of the lit torches, the one on the left-hand side, off the wall. Yep. yep. Then I'm going to turn back, and then I'm doing the thing, grabbing the... So I've now got one hand with a lit torch and the other hand with a flagon of ale. Yep. And I'm going to Alcohol and a a naked flame. I don't see how this can go wrong. (laughs) It's it's poor quality ale. You're looking at, like, 3% alcohol. (laughs) Um, Fergus Brewster, you know your stuff. And then I'm just going to start wandering and kind of skirting around the other two and gently... I'm not, I'm not picking up much speed, but I'm just kind of ambling forwards. Yeah. Probably to about here? Yeah, yeah, that looks like it's a decent... probably the one that, that you, you opened. Yeah. 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 So I've, just, I've just picked up my ale and carried on wandering, so I'm now ahead of them. Yep, sure. Um, cool. So as you, you... And you've got a torch now, haven't you? I do, and my hands both, are both... Both of you have a torch, and, and you took off the sconce from one of these. Uh, we'll say, did you say this one? Yeah. Okay, I'll just rub that out. There we go. For argument's sake, yeah. Um, okay, so, yeah, you've all got... Uh, what beer was it? Was it the Wizard's Whisper? It's probably quite light. Um, it barely touches the side. Um, uh, that's one of the first things that crossed your mind, uh Thorin, when you came down here, was not to take on whatever might be in the hole, but to crack open the nearest barrel. I'm going to award you with some inspiration. And what this means is this is something that is kind of like it's up to DM to DM to how they rule this. Basically, what it means is it's I treat it as a reward for, in my opinion, fun, good, amusing role playing. 
I think you played your character really well. Um, it's exactly the sort of thing that Thorin would do. So I'm going to award you inspiration. So if you look on your character sheet, you will see inspiration um, above your proficiency bonus, beneath your character name. Yeah. At the minute, it's probably just uh, a, an empty box, right? You can um, give that a tick. Uh, what it means is if you have inspiration at any time when you roll a D20, like some of you, like all of you have done so far, if you roll it and you're not happy with the result, inspiration means you can re-roll it. Uh, and it's, um, it's, and you essentially, it's like, um, a second chance um it's like a little uh, reward that the dm gives out to um characters from time to time it's worth noting that this inspiration does not stack you've either got it or you haven't when you spend it and that's totally up to you when you do spend it um you rub it out and you might earn it again um so it's totally up to you when you want to spend that wow. okay um, yeah, so you, I assume you're all sort of stood here now with a flag and a veil. Um, and Fergus, you're here. You're the you, you've as you step forward here. You, what is your passive perception? It is thirteen. Thirteen. Okay. You, as you look, I mean, you're you're the shortest of the party, and these barrels are probably you know, maybe almost as, uh, not, not your height, but they're, they're, they're pretty big. Um, you can see that um, there appears to be a, a boot on the floor here. Okay. If you, your line of sight, if we think in yeah. diagonal, you can just about see a boot on the floor and what appears to be uh, you know, a leg. Okay. So this this piques my interest. I, I don't necessarily. Well, I don't um, make a make a fuss about it. I don't tell the others. I just kind of peer across, um, and then still kind of relatively kind of nonchalantly holding my ale in one hand and torch in the other. I wander diagonally in the direction of the leg, kind of peering, leaning over, looking at it, because I guess it's still kind of dark behind there. Yeah. You, as you, as you approach here, you can see that the leg belongs to a hip, and the hip belongs to a body. It is the body of a gnome. Unfortunately, it's a dead gnome. It's a little bit like this guy here. Oh. It's a dead gnome. I'm going to put him there for for context. Um, he looks like he's. You've got your torch, of course, and it looks like he's wearing the sort of clothes as one of David of Spoonie's um, employers. Sorry, employees. Um, and at all that he's left us wow you're you've you've got free ale you're not going to turn this down you're <laughs> okay. just you're just dunking and I'm gonna... uh, and, and, yeah i'm on my fifth <laughs> um I'm gonna keep walking forwards towards the hole okay as you walked up to this point here you can see now that your torch is flickering through this hole and you yeah. can see it sort of um casting some shadows on this wall I don't know. Can you can you see the wall? I can just about see this back wall here. Yeah. It appears to be a five foot gap, and and from here you could see that the, the wall is uh, this five foot. It could be like a, a small corridor of some sorts. And your passive perception is good enough um, that you would be able to, as you walk this far, and the and the shadow starts to flicker and of course this is probably only about a minute after the colossal hulk smash that um landris did on that barrel of ale um you can hear what appears to be the sound of 
pattering, scampering footprints. Okay. Um, I'm going to take a step back and then... Um... As you do, the shadow sort of grows a bit, you know, as, as your uh, the shadow moves. And you can see the shadow on the wall starts to... The, the, there's a slight silhouette. Uh, coming so, from from here, I'm now kind the wall. of feeling a bit nervous and want to get the attention of the other two. So I'm like, "Hey, uh, guys, guys!" I I hear Fergus and I drop my bear and I draw my bow. As what? as Fergus shouts, "Guys, guys!" There's a slight, a never so soft echo. Guys, guys, guys! <laughs> from down here, and then. From, uh, I think that let me see, Landris, you might be able to see this. I imagine you've got one hand on your. Oh no, you're holding the, uh, you're holding your torch, aren't you, and your yes. flagon in the other. Uh, As you, you're stood straight in line with the door here. As Fergus turns around to look to tell you guys, guys, um, I imagine <laughs> Thorin's probably on tiptoes trying to scoop another uh, flagon out of here, <laughs> but you would see something pokes its nose around the corner here and it's it's gray it's you just about be able to be able to see it because the the light of your torch would only just about emit this far but it appears to be something gray furry it's got its eyes sort of reflect off of the torchlight, and they're 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 tiny, beady, but they look really quite angry to see you. And it looks a little bit like this. <laughs> oh dear! It looks like some kind of rat, but this rat is not rat-sized. This is the size of a Rottweiler. A Rattweiler, we could call it. Ooh. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Been working on that all day. Uh, yep, yep. I told you I was planning this last night. Um, <laughs> and this giant rat pokes its head around here, so... scurries forward and sort of scuttles over this rubble with a... <laughs> like that. And then... A second one follows it. Okay. And runs in here. And I think everybody roll for initiative. Oh, no. So what this means... Please act first. This means we're about to enter some combat. Everyone is going to roll a d20 dice. Oh, and really wanted your, to run away first. <laughs> you should have written your um, initiative um, order. Uh, sorry, your initiative bonus down somewhere. Um, it's going to be essentially be your dexterity. So you're going to have a uh, twenty, your d20 plus your um, dexterity modifier, and that will give you a number. Now I am going to do this as well for the rats. Because this is the important thing. Anything in D and D, whether it's a rat this size, whether it's a tiny rat, whether it's a giant, a dragon, a shark, anything has the same six stats that you have: uh, strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Of course, theirs will differ to yours. Um, you'd hope that most of you are more intelligent than a rat. Thorin, maybe not, but but who knows? Um, <laughs> um, when I'm adding my dexterity modifier, is that the modifier in the left hand column or the one yeah, in so saving? I'll show you a example. I'm going to flip. Oh no, you can see this in front of here. So here is a example character sheet. You your initiative is going to be exactly the same as your dexterity. So okay. this one is going to be exactly the same as this one. Basically, what it means is how quick are you to respond to the threat of danger? OK, I am rolling. 
So if everybody rolls, I have done the same for the rats and I have written that down. So first of all, uh, did anybody get above a 20? No. Did I rolled I rolled a one. I rolled a one. Now don't forget <laughs> at the back. Don't forget, I mean that is apt because you are trying to drink some beer at the moment. But now don't forget if you want you can spend your inspiration and re-roll it. But no, if I'm not happy you that. I'm far back and my initiative turns it to a four and I'm I'm far back, so I'll, I'll take my four. Okay. So um okay, so you've got uh your initiative <laughs> your your four. Okay. Um did anyone roll above fifteen? Yes. Okay. I got I got a seventeen. Seventeen, very nice. Uh and uh uh Fergus, what did you get? I rolled ten plus four, so fourteen. 14. Okay, so we've got 17, 14, and 4. I feel this is quite apt considering uh, your current situation. So we've got. Uh, I'm, so what I'm doing is I'm writing these down in an order. Um, Fergus, Landris, and Thorin. Okay, and uh, okay, so uh, Landris, you are sipping your ale, and you see these two uh, giant, uh, well, giant in comparison, rats. They are about, like I said, the size of a Rottweiler, a Labrador, um, scamper into the cellar through this hole from. Uh, this sort of direction and uh, you can see a third one <laughs> come here uh, and it is your turn first now this is quite convenient i say convenient is the dice have decided but for mechanical purposes callum is going to go first in combat and callum has played dig and d before so for, for argument's sake for uh jim and bod i'll quickly explain what it is you can do on your turn you get in theory one action that you can do on your turn now this could be an attack or it could be um uh any manner of other um actions i can describe these later to you if you're unsure of what you want to do but primarily what you'll do is you'll attack you will either attack using well your your weapons this could be a melee attack a melee attack is when you are for let's use these two as an example let's pretend you two were foes um this you could do a melee attack because you are immediately adjacent within five feet of each other while bod for example could not make a melee attack on you because he's not immediately next to you. He could make a ranged attack using, say, a bow or throwing a knife or a dart or something. But you can move on your turn. Each of you has a movement speed. Uh, I think uh, I think two of you can move 25 feet. Yeah. And Callum, I think you can move 30. Yeah, that's right. Now, what you can do is you can move and then you can attack you can attack and then you can move. You can move, attack and then move, providing you spend your amount of movement. Um, but it's important to note that once you enter a character's melee range, if you then try to leave their melee range, that character has an opportunity attack, um, a, a, an opportunity to try and attack you as you dodge away from it. Um, uh, but we'll see examples of that as we go ahead. But uh, Landris, you are up first. So what do you want to do? Would you like to move or would you like to attack? Is it free action to drop what's in my hands? It is, yes. That's a really good point. So a free action is like a minor action, such as dropping a um, torch or dropping a flagon. That would not count as the actual, the, the entire action that uh, 
um, Landris is making. So yeah, you could drop the flag and or you could drop the torch. I will drop. Uh, I'll drop both where I am. <laughs> okay, sure. And I'll move all the way up to I am dead in front of the rat. Okay, so let's remember that you have 30 feet of movement. So that could be, for example, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. That's it. Okay, so you move up to here. You're now in melee range of this rat. And I will make a melee attack using my greatsword, which is 2d6 slashing damage plus 4 attack bonus. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is you need to roll a d20 to see if you can hit the rat. So you roll a d20 and you're going to... I think your attack is... Is it a... We, we worked all this out in the session zero, of course. So Callum has all his stats in front of him. And what did you roll? I rolled a, can you see that, 13. 13 plus? Which is my proficiency. So the way you work this out, yep. You, so you rolled that d20, which you rolled a 13, and then you add your proficiency, and you also add your strength. Okay, so that's 13 plus because your four. Strength is a melee weapon because you're swinging a sword, right? Yep. So uh, what is that? So your strength is plus... Two. Pl plus two, and your proficiency is plus two. So that's a total of plus four plus the 13. So that's 17 to hit. Does the 17 beat a giant rat's armor class? Yes, it does. So you swing down with your sword, and now you're going to roll the damage, which is 2d6 plus 2, I think. Plus 2. So I got a 3 and a 2, plus 2, so that is 5, 6, 7. 7 points of slashing damage, or is it piercing damage? Uh... I think it's well either way you swipe down with this uh great sword this sword is probably bigger than uh thorin uh, probably bigger than fergus it's a pretty meaty weapon it's probably a favorite weapon and you know exactly how to use it you nearly chop this rat's head off it's it, it makes a horrible kind of screech and um uh yeah landris Stormred, the butcher, has arrived. Um, <laughs> you have dealt seven points of damage to that rat, and it looks at you with its beady, horrible eyes in sheer terror. You have five feet of movement left. Would you like to move any further? Am I able to move to the top left of where I am, diagonally? You can, yes. That's a really good point. We haven't... So if you move uh, orthogonal, up, down, left, right, it's always going to be five feet of movement. In theory, if you move diagonal, the first diagonal movement will cost five feet. The second diagonal movement will cost 10. The third diagonal movement will cost another five. The fourth will cost 10. On average, that works out at roughly seven and a half feet each time. But because this is Callum's, sorry, I keep calling you Callum. <laughs> because this is Landris's first diagonal movement, in this in this turn because he was here wasn't he 5 10 15 20 25 is he can move here for 30 feet that was where you wanted to move right that is thank you yeah now um he has not left this rat's melee range which means the rat doesn't get an opportunity attack so that is the end of callum's turn did that all make sense to you guys watching no worries if it didn't. Yeah. Uh, once it's your turn and it's happening to your character, you will grasp it. And Fergus, it is your turn next. Hmm. So, so I'm currently not in melee range, am I? No, you're not. But if you move five feet, you will be. Wow. And if I did something that wasn't an attack, for example, if I was to, because I'm thinking I'm three foot five, these dog sized rats are all the same size as me. Yeah. So I was wondering about jumping up onto a barrel to get a bit of height. Yeah. But whether that then would be my action so I wouldn't be able to attack anyway. 
I think if you wanted to climb uh, up onto the barrel, yeah, that would class as your action. Okay, I think we'll just go straight in with the attacking. <clears throat> so I'll go diagonal to be in front of that rat, yep. That's five feet. That's five feet, that's fine. And so I, I get two actions, right? Yes, so you are a monk. And what this means is in combat, you've got a really cool uh, trait, which is called martial arts. And what this means is if you make a attack with a monk weapon or a simple weapon, uh, and you have one, a sort of quarter staff of sorts. Yeah. Um, and if you're not wearing any armor, which you're not at the moment because you decided not to, you get to make a bonus second attack using uh, nothing but your fists, an unarmored strike. So your first attack could be with your quarterstaff. And then your second attack could be you could just try and punch the rat in the face. Yeah. I'm just thinking thematically, if you don't mind, <laughs> whether I could do something like with my flagon of ale as my bonus attack, if you can do it first, and that, this is more of a question than anything, I could just be like, throw the ale in the rat's face as my bonus attack, and then as my actual attack, use my quarter staff to bash it. I think if you're going to do try to do both, uh, yes, I'll allow you to use your um, uh, uh, unarmored strike first. And then your main attack afterwards. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, let's let's do that, then, please. OK, so number one, you're in melee. So what you're basically going to do is you're not going to throw the flagon because you're literally next to this rat. What you're probably going to do is try and thwack the rat, <laughs> whack the rat around their face with your wag, uh, flagon. Uh, yeah. or, or maybe, I don't know, uh, essentially sort of jab it on the end of its yeah, snout I mean, it, or whatever this has happened so quickly that i'm just like whoa boof yeah uh, just throw the beer just at it and the then... time just to go right and then i get my quarter staff off my back okay yep so so for your first attack you're going to roll a d20 20. and i think you're because you are super dexterous you're a monk sorry to use their dexterity uh with uh such attacks you're going to i think it's plus six for you uh-huh. So roll a d20 plus six. 19. 19 plus, plus six. six. That's 25. That is a hit. You've hit the rat. So you roll a d4. That's the oh. pyramid shaped one. Get another dice out of my box. All right, here it comes. D4. Uh, four. Four plus four because this rat back into its so hole. So that is eight points of uh, bludgeoning damage as you uh, absolutely smash this rat around the face with this flagon, and the rat goes down like a sack of spuds, dead. Out of here. I'm just going to move it off the map for now. You've still got a after your sort of. Uh, breathing heavily over this uh sorry uh <laughs> dead rat um you've uh um i, I imagine landris mutters something oh he softened and softened it up for you uh and then uh you've yeah now you reach for your quarter staff now like i said you can split your attack up to movement attack movement so you can move again if you want okay that's that's that for forwards so no, in fact, move... let's step a uh, diagonal. Is that one there on the right hand side? What I'm going to do is I'm going to move the uh, I'm just thinking of creating forward a little bit now because we're dealing over here. Can you just see to... that now? Let's yeah, move. I'll step diagonally just so when when Thorin finally realizes there's a fight going on. Um, <laughs> he, uh, <fire> straight. <laughs> OK, so you're going to go here. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a total of 15 feet movement because you've moved two diagonal, mm -hmm. two diagonals in a row. Yep, so you're now in melee range of this rat and right. you reach for your quarter staff. I assume you're going to try and do some crazy monk move. Yeah, I'm going to 
do a bit of spinny McSpin face and yep. hit it. Okie dokie, so that's another d20 roll for you. Okay. That is 17. 17 plus, plus again, so 20. 23 is a hit. So this time you roll, I think it's a d6. Another dice in the box. Two. Okay, uh, two plus four, I think. Yes. Yeah, it, that should be on your character sheet. The um, yeah, it was. Um, I double check. I think it was. I think four. it is because it's your dexterity, isn't it? Yeah, so everything's. So everything. two plus four is a total of six. As you uh, uh, whack this rat around the chops, uh, you nearly send its head off like you're a, a, a baseball player you know hitting a home run it almost does a 360 as you nearly knock it off its feet it's looking very groggy any more movement for you you have 10 feet of movement left um i, uh, I can't go diagonal twice can i uh, you can go diagonal again if you want to say move here yeah let's do that okay so that would uh put you on 20 you're still in melee range of this rat so if mm. you try and leave it it's melee range for example moving here it will then get an opportunity attack on you okay let's let's stay put okay then um, yeah all right it is now the rat's turn and this rat has just been hit around the face by a tiny ninja-like creature that just sort of ran out of the darkness. Sorry about um, that. And it looks at you a bit crazy-eyed. It has, it looks like it's sort of, it looks drunk itself because you've clearly nearly knocked it out. And it's going to try and, it's going to try and lunge at you and it's going to try and bite you. Okay. Okay, and it rolls. It rolled a 10. This is against your armor class. 17. Yeah, so that is a miss. It clearly is almost uh, on its last legs. That is a miss. Uh, it is going to try and circle you like a drunken boxer like this as it bites at you're able to just dodge like Neo. You're sort of just able to move out of the way. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're moving at twice its speed and it, its jaws just clamp at nothing. And it moves around here in frustration. Then this one comes down here. And the first thing it sees is this big beefcake here. <laughs> who stood over the body, let's not forget, of this one here. Uh, and this one is going to try and bite Landris. That is a 16. That is my armour class. That is your armour class, which is a hit. So this thing is going to... Uh, it, it, lunge, it jumps up at you. It's like a size of a dog. And... Uh, Imagine these teeth are going to try and sink and pierce into your armour. <laughs> going to roll a... So, of course, if we were playing this around a table, I would be behind a DM screen. So I would be rolling... Some, some DMs roll the dice in front of the screen. Others roll behind. You take... Five points of piercing damage. Nasty. As you feel this thing uh, sink its teeth into your thigh. Uh, and then, as you let out a little wealth of pain, you hear some more scurrying <laughs> from here. As this one comes here. And this one 
comes this way. Now it is leaving your melee range. Would you like an opportunity attack to try and hit it? Yeah, at a complete blind rage. Okay. So as it tries to, of course, remember these uh, eight squares around uh, Landris are his melee range. And as this rat enters it and leaves it, because it's more focused on Fergus, you get an opportunity attack to try and hit it as it runs in and out of your melee range. So roll a d20. That was nearly a 20. Two. Oh, what did you roll? A two. Oh, no. Unfortunately, that's a miss. Um, this one is going to uh, make a running jump at Fergus. And that is a 14. No. Once again, Fergus is just like Neo. Uh, nothing can touch him in the darkness. Um, you, you're still holding a torch, so maybe you're uh, waving the torch at them and, and distracting them. Yeah. Uh, it is now, finally, finally, it is now Thorin's turn. Thorin, you've just wiped your mouth, <laughs> the back of your hand. You say, oh, what's going on over there? Uh, you've seen this commotion. You've got dark vision, remember, so you can see this. Uh, yeah. I don't know if you'd be, uh, you might see like the tails of these rats, but right now these barrels are in the way. But you can definitely see this horrible thing trying to chomp on Landris's leg. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move diagonally forwards and left twice to be next to that barrel in the middle. Yep, so that's uh, 15 feet of movement. Then I'm going to try and hit the one next to Landris with my yep. bow. Absolutely. So make a d20 uh, roll. 19. 19 plus your six, because if you remember, you're, um, you're adding your uh, attack bonus to this. So that's 25. Uh, by now, you guys have probably worked out that's enough to hit one of these things. Uh, so, yes, you successfully hit. And a longbow, which is the weapon of choice, I think is a d8. It's on your character sheet. A D8 plus three. D8 plus three. Okay, so roll the D8. The D8, by the way, is this one that sort of, I call it a kite. It sort of looks like a kite. I've got a one. A one plus three. So, yeah, four. Four points of damage to uh, that one, which is, okay. It is certainly enough to catch its attention as you hit it in the flank. And it loosens its jaws from Landris's leg and looks at you. Um, Any more movement for you? No. Can I attack a second time? You can't, I'm afraid. That's only something that monks get to do. When you level up as a ranger, you will get a second attack okay. at some point in the future, but not right now. You um, have 10 more feet of movement left if you want to move forward, back. I'll, I'll stay where I am because I'm still in range for... Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we're back up to the top. It's Landris. I am going to attack the one directly in front of me. Okay, it's got an arrow still quivering in its in its back leg. I got a 17. 17 is a hit. And then it's 2d6 plus 2 for my greatsword. That's 7 plus 2, 9. 9. You, as this thing is looking at uh, Thorin, it's enough to distract it. And yes, you send its head spinning. That thing is dead. Very good. I'm going to... I'm going to stay put. Okay. I'm going to stay put. Okay. Uh, yep, the adrenaline still pumping through your veins. You're now stood over two dead rats. Uh, moving on to Fergus. You are surrounded by two rats at the moment. Oh. Um, I guess I'll hit one of them. Okay. Which one do you want to go for? Let's go for the one that's uh, between me and the barrel. This one here? That's it. Now, I assume you're using your quarterstaff for your first action. Yes. Yep. 
Okay, so that's a D20 roll. D20. Fourteen plus six. That's a, a non-natural twenty. Yep. And so that's a hit. So you now roll your uh, d6 dice. Two plus four. So that's six. Six. This was the one that you uh, attacked earlier, mm -hmm. and this time it's enough to send this thing. In, up to rat heaven it's gone <laughs> you've still got an extra attack so if uh, if you want to try and punch or kick or make an unarmed yep. strike against this one oh um so i did some impressive whip okay span my stick around and knock that one flying and then yep. i just kind of lean and i kick to the side yep. on this other one okay uh another d20 to see if you can successfully uh Bruce Lee, this thing. Ooh, two, so that's uh, eight. No, you pull a hammy. Oh. Uh, that's, uh, that's got all sorts of wrong. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, yeah, this thing now has watched you dodge, and this thing has mimics you and sort of ducks its way out of your flailing uh, boot. Are you wearing shoes, by the way, or are you barefoot like Frodo? Uh, no, I'm, I'm barefoot. Yeah. So, it, yeah, as you're... Uh, you're your bare feet to swing at it, it's able to duck its way. Um, uh, any movement for you? Here we are, five, ten. So, yeah, let's move myself. So I'm basically the other side of that rat now. So do you want to go? Like around it. Yeah, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, like this, for example. Yeah, or I could do diagonal five and then diagonal for another. Five, fifteen, yeah, to get yeah. here. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, yep. So after you've sort of uh, air kicked, you've you've sort of then scurried around it, and you're mm -hmm. yeah, you're now there. It is now the rat's turn, and it turns around after having sort of uh, neoed its own way out of trouble, and then tries to attack you. This time bring it on it rolls a 19 oh okay we did bring it on My. yeah i think you you taunted the rat and now it's gonna these things have got teeth although this one luckily doesn't have, does quite have as, yes. this one doesn't have quite as more more buck teeth than the uh, the razor sharp ones that attacked uh that attacked landris uh and you take five points of piercing damage so have I got to put that down somewhere? Yeah, so you, you've you got a total number of hit points. We worked this out in the session, uh, in the session zero. Uh, if you're not sure what they are, I can remind you. Uh, I don't right seem now. to have that written down anywhere. That's okay. Uh, we can. It's really easy for level one characters, which you are. You're Ooh, level nine. One I see it now. Nine. As the hit points are like your sort of. If you want to think of it like a computer game, it's kind of like your health bar. Nine. You're now on four. Yeah. Okay. And Callum, you were on. Eleven. Eleven, and you're now down to six. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it is now Thorin's turn. I'm going to step forward two spaces. Yep. And then Five, try and use my longbow again to attack that remaining rat. Okie dokie. Uh, roll a d20. 20! You, you rolled a 20? Yeah. Amazing. Okay, I was really hoping... Uh, Callum's smiling because he knows what's going to happen. I was really hoping one of you would roll a 20. It's obviously a big deal because it's a 20-sided dice, it's a 1 in 20 chance. If you roll a d20, it is called a critical hit. A natural 20. And what this means is you're going to uh, roll... Normally, you'd roll a 1d8 plus... What is it? 1d8 plus 3 for you? Uh, 1d8 plus 3, yes. Because you rolled a 20, you have closed one eye, dead shot Thorin, this is the perfect strike. 
you instead roll 2d8 plus 3. You double the number of dice you roll. Double the dice once the, va once the, um, the uh, modifier. So that is going to be 2d8 plus 3. Okay. I've uh, got 5 with the first one, 2 with the second, so 7, 10. 10 points of damage. Where were you aiming in this for this rat? His heart. His heart, yep. You absolutely pierce it to the wall. Uh, it goes straight through. <whistles> Dead in one. No messing about. Now, <laughs> this, this is just a little personal thing for me. I had two sweets here, and I've refused to have any of them until someone either rolled a natural one or a natural 20. So <laughs> thank you, Jim. I can now finally have this bounty because you rolled a natural 20. <laughs> okay. Nice. Fergus, you see somewhere from the shadows over here the scurrying of a rat that sounds, giant rat that sounds very, very scared here. Yeah. And it runs, takes sort of one look at you, but this rat looks a little bit like a cowardly runt of the bunch, takes one look at you and runs on past this way. Do you want an opportunity attack? Not going to do any harm, I guess. Yeah. So, a d20. Da, da, da. Ooh, 16. 16 is a hit. D6. Mm -hmm. four. 4 plus 4, 8. 8. It makes a, a scared yelp. Uh, and just carries on uh, running down the corridor out of sight and you hear as it runs out of sight completely out into the darkness you hear a sort of noise like a scything sort of uh, metallic uh, noise and then a a, a rat really loud squeal and then silence okay so now, i'm going to say that at this point that is the end of combat and you have all earned some experience points Ooh. Well, yeah, you yeah. have each earned uh, 40. 40? 40 zero XP each. It's worth noting that these kind of work in an accumulative fashion, and when you hit certain thresholds, or a milestone if you want to think of it, you will eventually level up. You level up to being a second level character, unlocking all the cool traits and stuff like that, when you get 300 points. Okay. You're now out of combat, so you don't have to move in initiative order. You're back to exploring the uh, um, cellar. So you just heard this rat go this way. I just wanted to ask about how I... Like, is there a way to um, get hit points back? It definitely is. Um, so in D&D, &D, what happens is if you want, you can take a what's called a short rest. A short rest means you stop, you camp for one hour. And what you can do is if you take a short rest, you can roll a hit die. You all have one hit die marked down. Uh, and this number, this hit die depends on the class that you picked. For example, I think that uh, Thorin's hit die, I think off the top of my head is a D10. Yeah. Meanwhile, I think that Fergus's is a D8. D8. Yeah. Now, what you can do is, if you want, you can roll this hit die, take a short rest, so you rest for one hour, you can roll the hit die, and you add the whatever you roll, plus your constitution modifier, and you will gain those hit points back up to your maximum. Now, if my memory is correct, I don't think Thorin took any damage in that fight, so it would be no point Thorin rolling a hit die. But the other two could if they want. If you take a long rest, this is normally what you do um, in the evening, for example, sleeping. A long rest is eight hours. 
and you automatically get all of your hit points back when you wake up. And uh, um, if you spent any hit dice, you get half of those hit dice back with a minimum of one. Well, if it's all right with you two, and I'm sure I could persuade you with some ale that we've got going on here, I wouldn't mind a short rest because I lost over half my light health just then. Yeah, you can do that. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, if you listen, you might hear that you can hear other stuff. I mean, you're really close to this door now, so you'd be able to hear. You can hear other stuff there, but um, you've after this one ran, and then you heard a sort of noise. After a minute or so, you didn't hear anything else. That is in the immediate vicinity. But one thing that should be noted is that there are always consequences in D&D. If you wait for an hour, something could happen. It's totally up to you. So, well, it's up to you. You're the, the other two here. I need the rest as well, to be fair. Yep. So if you two want to uh, sit up and for example, uh, prop yourself against some barrels, have a well-earned drink. You could do that and mm -hmm. both roll a hit die. Meanwhile, Thorin, if you want, you could... I mean, you're stood right in front of these tools. Yeah, I'm going to go explore the tools. Sure. See if there's anything useful there. Okay. Make uh, So while these guys... Oh, so first of all, before I get ahead... Uh, let's do the uh, the rolling of the um, hit dice. Let's go with um, Thorin. Uh, sorry, uh, Fergus first. You're a D8, aren't you? So roll a yeah. D8. D8. <laughs> Five. Five. And then your constitution, is it plus one? Plus one, yeah. So that's a total of six, which means you're back up to full health because you can't go above your current hit point total. So you're back up to nine. Well-earned rest for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, Landris, what hit die have you got? I've got a D10. Nice. So I have rolled a 6 plus my modifier, which is plus 1. So that's 7. That's more than enough to heal me back up to max. Awesome. This must be really powerful healing beer. Mm. Um, uh, um, so on your character sheet, if you mark off that you've spent your one hit die, if you take a long rest, you'll get it back. Meanwhile, uh, while you guys are resting, chatting about, oh, yeah, I killed this. Oh, do you see I cut that one's head off? Talking all this stuff about how you how you did in combat. Uh, Thorin, meanwhile, is checking out the tools down here. Um, Thorin, make an investigation check. That gives me minus two. I rolled a 13, so 11. Okay. You're, um, you see in front of you, too far away from this unfortunate chap here, what appears to be some sort of gnome-like weapon. It looks like it's some kind of spear with some sort of mad contraption screwed onto the tip of it. This ain't no average spear. This weapon spearhead features a gnome contraption skewed onto it. That seems to be some kind of high-power pneumatic motor, allowing it to function as a drill. If the target has no armour, the wielder may forego damage to instead inflict a permanent armour decrease, using that target's AC by one, but never below target's unarmoured AC. Also, this drill through materials such as certain bricks, rocks, wood and the like, with a flathead crosshead and hex shaped bit attachments. The dual spear takes 10 minutes to charge daily. It has three charges per day, which will refresh at dawn. So, what this means is you've found a gnome crazy contraption. Gnomes are well known for their gizmos, they're, they're, quite, they're quite into their tech and stuff like this, even in a medieval environment. And uh, this is a, is it called a drill spear? Mm -hmm. a drill spear and basically it's a drill with a uh, it's a spear with some sort of crazy pneumatic drill thing mechanical gizmo attached to the end now what you can do is you can use this as a weapon to try and throw it or jab it at um a target 
and if you want you can treat it like a normal spear or you can treat it like a um the the drill damages the uh target's armor class now if we compare that to the rats the rats had a certain armor class it was a natural armor class rather than uh, much like um fergus's rather than uh something that was wearing armor like for example um uh, Landris, who's wearing a lot of armor. If you use this spear to try and damage a target's armor class, you don't damage it, but on a hit, its armor class goes down by one, thus making it easier, in theory, for your compadres to hit it. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Um, instead, you could use it to, like these gnomes were doing, to simply try and drill through a wall or. Uh, uh, wood or, or it, it says some materials right it didn't say every material but some materials it might so that might work yeah uh and also if you take i uh this guy here um i assume you were sort of well did you want to have a look at him as well might as well have a little look yeah sure i mean you are sort of dare i say it sticky fingered uh mercenaries aren't you so if you take a look in his pockets um <laughs> Uh, roll your percentile dice. So these are the two d10s. Jim is going to get a number between one and a hundred. Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine. Cool. Uh, the way you did that, just for anyone watching, uh, this d10 would be on the thirty, right? Mm-hmm. And the other d10, which is this one would be on the nine yeah thus making 39 cool 39 okay you find that oh so lovely familiar chink of metal in this guy's pockets it sounds like money e. he has some coins and jim could you roll four d6 for me please okay four Three, one, and three. So that's a total of 11. Mm -hmm. You find 11 silver pieces in this guy's pockets. So on your character sheet, under, uh, where are we? Uh, equipment. Mm -hmm. These are all your different currencies. Basically, if you want to think of it like uh, sterling copper pieces are like you know one and two p's silver pieces are like uh, 10 p's gold pieces are pounds and platinum pieces are oh my maths uh, 10 pounds i think okay it's not it, obviously the exchange rate is ye olde medieval times but if you think of the sort of difference between the values it's uh you, so you found um you know uh, some decent pocket change in this guy's pockets um also, in front of you, of course, there is a whole heap of giant rats. I'm going to see if I can, that one with the big teeth, I'm going to see if I can snap off its teeth so I have that as a memento of the battle. And you maybe, absolutely can. Maybe a um, <laughs> Yeah, you absolutely can. Um, make a sleight of hand check to see how... Um, uh, how dexterous you are at being able to actually, you know, take this thing out without breaking the tooth itself. Uh, I rolled a three and I've, <laughs> I've got plus three, so that's six. Six. OK, you're able to, as you grab hold of the point of this, it's almost like a tusk coming out of this horrible rat's mouth. You, uh, as we know, you um, when you will try to whack that uh, barrel, um, you, you give it a, a, a yank, but unfortunately you only snap off the very tip of this tooth but hey to anyone else it will look like a rat's tooth but to you you know the real you know uh the the, the hard you know challenges you went through to to take that thing down uh yeah you've got a, a the tip of a rat's tooth so you can add that to your um uh you might as well add that somewhere to say your um equipment yeah you, who knows? You w might. I mean, if if I know people that play in D and D, you found a little tip of a rat's tooth. You will find a use for it somehow. <laughs> I've got every faith you will. So 
Um, after you've sort of worked, tried, finally worked out what this drill is, check this guy's pockets, try to really take this um, uh, tooth out. I think that's probably about an hour. You guys are now feeling up for it. You've had a couple more beers. You feel good and ready to go. Um, yeah, what do you want to do? The tunnel? Yep, you've got the lead. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to step forward and then peer through the tunnel and see if I can hear anything, any noise or scuttling, and then venture forward sure. and see what I can see. As you step forward, are you sort of looking left and right? Yeah. Yeah. You can see that this... Here's to be a corridor. Five feet wide. And it's about um, five feet, uh, um, uh, sorry, about two feet down from the f height of this floor. So it's a definite step down. And as you look, you can see that it goes off into the distance, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. You've got dark vision, so you would be able to see that uh, you would see that there are some really tiny, tiny holes in the, the wall here. I really don't. I'm, I'm, you, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing there. Like tiny, like little holes here. In, like the holes that a normal rat would, would crawl through, like every so often. Uh, and then you would see that uh, this way, you could see that the corridor carries this way and then a, there's a corner um, and your passive perception is 14. 14 right this corridor here uh, you can see you can see that on your camera right mm -hmm. yeah it leads off here and you'd see that there's or appears to be rubble that sort of uh, blocking this the end of that corridor as if there's been a sort of cave in and as you come as you look this way you'd see the odd occasional hole in the floor here and you would see on uh, on the so as you, as you would have come down you'd see on the wall here um a shimmer of gold at first it looks like it's as, it, as if it's reflecting off a light surface or something but then you realize that it's a kind of calligraphy, a kind of scrawl. It's not, uh, and you realise that this is a, a written message of some sorts. But it's not in common. It's not in Dwarvish. It appears to be in a lovely, flowing, elegant script. Now, what languages do you speak? I speak Elvish, Dwarvish, Common and Giant. It's definitely not Giant. It looks like you recognise this language and it appears to be Elvish. Landris and Fergus, what languages do you speak? Common and Draconic. Uh, common and Halfling. So you guys can't read this. It looks like, if you imagine Elvish in Lord of the Rings, for example, it, it, mean, it looks pretty, it looks nice, but it means nothing to you. But you can see... Um, well, what, what are you? Are you guys going in here after? Uh, yeah, I'm going to keep. Um, I'm going to have picked up my torch and then kept in formation. Sure. Yep. And yep. Uh, Fergus. Okay, then I'll uh, bring up the rear. <laughs> okay, you've got. Uh, you both got. Oh, if you've stayed an hour, that means your torch has now gone out. So, do you want to light another torch? Yes, but I will have also lit the other one on the left hand side that we didn't light. Yep. Oh, yeah. So you're going to utilize the one over there rather than one of your own stash. So I like one of mine and then I like one over there because then at least we've still got 18 between us all. Yep. Cool. Good thinking. Why yep. use your own, right? So, um, uh, uh, OK, so Thorin is here and you would have followed and you've sort of seen him staring at the wall, sort of mouthing, talking at the wall. I don't know if that's normal behaviour for Thorin. You might that might just be a normal Thursday, but um, uh, he's you know he's he seems to be talking to the wall or at least reading something on the wall. What does it say, Thorin? I'll read it out to you guys. Dawn breaks with staring air. The sun shines down on a new day fair. 
Midday blaze bakes earth and grass. The farmer waits for heat to pass. Evening cool brings water wine. Drink and laughter pass in time. Night sees shine in roaring fire as woods and coals burn on the fire. Well, that sounds like dwarven nonsense to me. <laughs> yeah, it's over my head. Elvish even, sorry. What do we do with it? I don't know what it means. Dawn breaks the stone air, isn't she? As you guys have come through here, you're both holding torches, right? So the flickering flames would uh, sort of reflect off of this golden scripture. It looks like it's been, um, as, as I'm assuming you're now all stood in a line, aren't you? Probably reading it like this. Um, uh, and it's quite it's quite large. It's not like a tiny um, uh, tablet or anything. It's like it's uh, written probably about five feet. It's it's like a, in a couple of verses, like it's a it's it's like like a poem, and it's sort of been etched onto the wall as if it's almost um, almost sort of like not chiselled, but like engraved into the wall. Um, but it's a very flowing, elegant scripture. Um, I assume that Thorin would tell you it is Elvish. You might even recognise. Oh, that's a, a, the Elvish alphabet, but it means nothing to me. But. Thorin tells you what it says. He, he speaks fluent Elvish. I don't think there's anything that we can do with this message at this point. So should we carry on investigating round the corner? Yep. Shall I peek round the corner first before you clatter around? I'll stay back. Just one <laughs> time. <laughs> right. Assuming yep. as I'm small, even though they're both like using up the, the full corridor, I can go past them. Yeah, that's a really good point. Even if you were in combat, you can move through a ally's space. Okay. But you have to use, in combat. You'd have to use double your movement. So if we were in combat, we're not. But if we were, you could move instead of just moving five, ten, fifteen. You'd have to move ten, twenty, twenty-five, thirty, and so on like that. But because you're not in combat, yeah, you can just sort of squeeze past coming through, gents, or you could just say legs akimbo and run <laughs> underneath all of them. Uh, yeah. So we've got a new sort of order. Um, the confident halfling is leading the way. Okay, I'm going to um, peek around the corner. Okay. And see what I can see. Okay, you. The corridor continues. Still five feet wide. You can see a doorway, and it looks like it's ever so slightly ajar. You just about be able to see there is another door here. But in front of you, 20 feet in front of you, is a lovely uh, stone mosaic on the floor. It covers up the next 20 feet. Halfway between, about here, you can see the rat. Oh. Halfway along here, but now the rat looks... A bit like this. Yes. <laughs> sort of as if it's been chopped in half like this. So that's the rat that ran away earlier? It, yeah, yeah. Um, it's It's got the same sort of snarled expression, if, if you want to say all rats look alike. Um, but uh, Burgess clearly tried to swipe and attack one earlier, and it went, ran here. You heard a... <laughs> noise and there's someone there else in the tunnel and killed it appears to be a dead rat cut completely in half i'm looking at some stone artwork on the floor here folks and it seems to be a representation of that poem mm. i i'm going to very gingerly so like i'm stood where i am but i, I like put one foot onto the first section and kind of put a bit of pressure on it what just just sort of uh just testing uh, it i'm a bit right. concerned this is a trap or some in some way i want to try and like work out if there might be a trap in that first area okay why, why do you think there's a trap well there's a very ill-looking rat halfway along here 
and this artwork matches the poem. So dawn breaks with stirring air, sunshine. So we've got dawn, midday, evening, and night here in this on the floor. But I'm just something's up. I don't really know what. Yeah, I think you're right. It's the the poem is like the code of how to get through it without dying. So dawn breaks with staring air as sun shines down on New Day Fair. So that's fine. I think you can step on the first one. But the second one, midday blaze bakes earth and grass. So maybe like fire comes out, and then the farmer has to wait for the heat to pass. Maybe that's what killed the rat. It's all very Indiana Jones. I like it. <laughs> um, I reckon I push uh, forwards getting impatient to see what happens when he steps on the first thing. Thanks, you push Phil. him onto the... <laughs> with it, Very with... dangerous. You go first and just push him <laughs> forward. <laughs> then he'll be all right. Go okay. On. He's Strong pushing me forward back. and I like... I kind of like... I'm stood up by like starfish like... <gasps> like that, <laughs> thinking yep. I'm, I'm about to like get cut in half. Uh, and... Yeah. Make an acrobatics check to see if you're quick enough to uh, sort of starfish against the wall. Uh, okay, d20. D20 plus your acrobatics. Ooh, acrobatics, what's that? Let's have a look. 11. Oh, six. Okay, so 17. 17, yeah. You're uh, able to sort of awkwardly starfish. You can hear a horrible rip. That might be your underwear. You're not sure, but you are sort of uh somehow both of your legs are like doing the splits and both of your <laughs> hands are also doing the splits you're about a foot off the floor uh you can feel your forearm sort of trembling but at the minute you are at the minute you are uh, you're above you're you're sort of like like this you're above it yeah and uh thorin is stood behind you probably <laughs> laughing <laughs> so what did i see what happened did a blade come out or something uh, well, I think that what happened is, as you pushed him forward, he jumped up. Okay, so there was no trap. So he hasn't. Um, yeah, he, he's 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 above he's above the uh, the, the mosaic. Um, uh-huh. He's not sort of it. starfishing against the wall in some okay. sort of crazy uh, ninja move. I mean, it is it's it's so very Fergus, isn't it? Yeah. He probably did stuff like this in monk training, you know, yeah. as soon as he entered that monastery. Okay, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to say. I'm sorry about that, Fergus. And I give him a hand and bring him back. And then I'm going to go back to the first room and I'm going to bring back one of the rats. I'm going to chuck it onto the first step to see what happens. <laughs> yep, sure. Uh, uh, okay, why not the uh, the rat that you... Which was the one you... One I from, I think this was the one you you yeah. you shot with the arrow, wasn't it? He doesn't he doesn't look like that anymore, obviously, because I pulled. No, it. no, no. Oh no, of course not. One of his tooth, his teeth is sort of yeah. very gently snapped off at the end. But yeah, yeah um, uh, if we move Fergus back, you very you managed to get him back. You went back to the other room. You carried a rat over your shoulder because remember these are like the size of dogs. And then what you want to chuck it onto this one here. Chuck it on there to see if anything happens. Uh, uh, do you want to just chuck it on there willy nilly or? Yeah, I'm pretty reckless and I'm six or seven pints down at this point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, sure. So as you chuck it down here, um, you can see, boom, it lands. And uh, you can see that a sort of uh, circular, as it lands, as soon as it hits the, the mosaic, a circular sort of saw comes across and chops this rat in half. There's now two of these rats like this. As soon as it lands on here, the 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 the, um, the saw sort of it's like a you know a circular wooden uh, uh, like a lumber mill kind of saw. As it comes through, I'm going to try and smash the thing, the trap, with my short sword to disable the trap so we can go through. Yeah, sure. Make, uh, yeah, roll, roll a, um, hmm, let me see. Uh, yeah, 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 make, make a, okay, make a, 
a d20 attack roll as if you were going to attack it with your sword. 20! Honestly, 20 again. Another 20? Yeah. Wow. You know what that means? I'm yeah. getting a Milky Way. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was worried because I was thinking if none of you roll any of these. Okay, so your uh, short sword, I believe, is it a D6 on your character sheet? D6, yeah. Okay, so you get to roll two D6. Unfortunately, it's plus zero because I think Five. you're... Five and six. Five and a six? You rolled an 11. Wow. Okay. Uh, let me just check. Yeah, you you with the dwarven uh, uh, passion, or maybe the uh, just in, in you feel a bit bad about having just, you know, you, you could have thrown uh, no, the, the halfling onto there after all. I you, don't with the, sh the sheer anger, you... Um, pretty much cut this thing in half and it sort of go as it as it comes through and it's and it uh rattles to a sort of halt um sort of halfway um along the uh the floor here so but it comes to a point where it's not only have you hit it with your sword but it, but because it's slowed down and it's caught in the rat it is now sort of permanent, it's static so this rat is on here if you imagine this rat is cut in half as well uh, but there is a little sword uh, not sword a little uh, saw sticking out part way through this first five feet of the mosaic but it's now okay i reckon we can step forward to that first step then are you I'm volunteering gonna... yourself yeah i'm happy what do you guys reckon is it safe do you think now I'm going to go get another rat. Yeah, good idea. We've <laughs> got a working method. Okay. Yeah, good night. Landris goes back and gets his friend, this guy. Um, I, 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 sorry, did you, um, Thorin, what did you do? Are you are you still here or have you moved forward? Yeah, I'm going to stay there and I'm going to let Landris step forward and chuck the Okay, rat. so you'll shuffle forward. Landris, okay. <laughs> are you now... You've now got this rat slung over your shoulder. Yep. Uh, you, yep. Uh, it's the size of a, a dog, a Rottweiler. What do you want to do? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to punt it and try and get it onto that second square. <laughs> Drop kick it, you mean? Yep. <laughs> oh, gosh. Okay. Um, <laughs> how would I make you do this? I'm going to make you roll a... Ro make an athletics check. Okay, okay. So I got 17 plus 4, 21. 21, yep. Uh, you try and fold this rat in half and you kick it as if you're making a drop kick in football and it sails over this one. And as soon as it lands, again, another saw comes out and this one sort of gets cut in half. There's now two dead rats here. Um, uh, and, the, and the saw um, disappears. There's there's a horrible just that this section of the mosaic now red. With <laughs> We're making quite a scene. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so this so first Queen one is going to go mental when they find the state of this. Um, but yeah, there's two dead rats on this section now. Did they... uh, the saw the saw just disappears as soon as it, so it comes whoosh, and then disappears. Did the trap trigger the second the rat landed on the floor? Yeah, as soon as it landed, Landris dropped kick this in a worrying fashion that stated it's not the first rat he's kicked. Um, and it sort of went, and as soon as it hit, the saw came and cut this thing in half like it was a knife through butter. Yeah, okay. And then as soon as it's done that, the saw then disappeared you know as quickly as it came and now there are two dead rats i'll just put that one on the other side if you imagine they're both cut in half yeah. and this section of the mosaic um is now rather oily with with rat blood okay i reckon i'm going to use my star as a pole vault i'm going to run i'm going to step onto the first one that yep. we put the crap on mm -hmm plant my pole and then try and leap to land onto the square 
where the door is. Okay, uh, that's really interesting because you want to try and use the jump ability. You want to jump 15 feet? Now, with my pole. There, now, what I'm going to say is there are, there are rules about jumping, so this seems a really good time to talk about them. Uh, I'm just going to check the player's handbook to make sure I'm getting this right. right the rules. I'm going to go back into the other room and have a couple of pints just to get the courage. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Sorry, I'm having to check the uh, index of the player's handbook, so bear with Are me. There not any more dead rats? Yeah, we've got another dead rat, and we've also got the gnome body that we can chuck on there. <laughs> <laughs> no, let's go pick it. Yeah, let's go get those. Oh, barrels down. Carry the barrels, put the barrels on there, and create like a barrel bridge. I'm just thinking maybe we should test the other squares because I'm concerned that that's a long way to pole unless you've got an actual pole ball like pole with you that's quite a long way you might not make it I don't want to see you cut in half <laughs> quite yet <laughs> sorry one eight page 182 I'll have an answer for you in a second so uh, okay Thorin your strength determines how far you can jump. If you want to do a long jump, which is what you're essentially trying to do, uh, if you cover, uh, you can cover a number of feet up to your strength score. Now, is your strength score 11? 11, yeah. So you can jump 11 feet. Uh, uh, if you have at least a 10 feet run up which i've got well the problem is is you're running around a corner no i'm gonna i'll swap to where landris is run from that space onto the first base plant my pole there but i'm still four feet short because i don't want to land on the last base i want to land on where the door is so if, if you if you were to jump from here yeah which has got like a, a saw a circular saw stuck in the rat and also you tried you you know, you absolutely smashed it with your short sword. You could clear these two, but you'd land here. Yeah, so I'm trying. I'm wondering if I can use my pole to clear me the extra four feet. I can jump 11. Can the pole make it 15? I think it would with the successful die roll. Okay. And the die roll will be a... I, th I think I'm going to go for athletics. Cool. I got plus two on that. Okay, so uh, so you're rolling a d20. Yeah, I got 10 plus 2, 12. 12. Okay. Uh, okay, as you run, you, you stand on this step of the um, uh, mosaic. As you put plant your feet and indeed your pole, of course, the, the saw is static, doesn't move. You shove it into the ground and you do a launch over. You can see two dead <laughs> rats underneath you. You can see an empty space. And then you can see this section of the mosaic get closer and closer and closer. And you <laughs> land on this section of the mosaic. And everything's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know what you're ice worried about. Ice cream uh, comes out of the walls. Oh, hang on. What, did you did you say you rolled a twelve? Uh, ten plus two, twelve. Yeah. Twelve. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm not even making this up. Twelve is what you. Twelve. Twelve is good. You uh, you see the saw come up and it shaves sort of the, uh, your, your feet like land right on the very edge of yeah. this bit and the saw sort of shaves you know the the, the maybe right. the, a, couple, a couple of hairs off your buttocks oh. and you can feel it <laughs> the beard's fine though right and and then you just <laughs> you fall on a heap tell me the beard's fine door. tell me the beard's fine the beard is fine but i think there might be uh some problems with the pants department <laughs> uh, we had to get a pants reference in there at some point, didn't I'm we? Certainly, um, I'm wearing any. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, you have landed in a heap in front of that door, and uh, this saw has now completely 
uh, vanished out of sight. Okay, I'm going to turn. see on the other side of the uh, mosaic, Landris probably looking at you with one eyebrow raised like this. Probably quite impressed. <laughs> I, impressive. I turn to face Landris and do like a freeze frame, fist in the air as as credits credits roll, like freeze yeah. frame moment, and then suggest that they now get some barrels that they can roll to me that I can then stop it where I am. They then roll a second and a third, and then they create a barrel bridge. Oh, OK. That could work. OK, let's try that. Let's try it. And if not, we throw the gnome and the rat. Or I, can I mean, you could do I mean, and you, you guys could maybe. Can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. So you're going to go back and pick up, say, a barrel like this. Yeah, there's milk churn barrels. Uh, okay, so um, I think these barrels are quite heavy, um, but if you were to roll them, you'd probably be able to. Yeah, I'm thinking. Uh, and then I stop them so they don't go further than we want them. Okay, there's only that. Uh, there is one little problem. You've got half of a saw, a mangled saw that's sticking up here, and you've got two dead rats that are on the floor. Here, cut in half, so almost like four rats. Mm. Yeah, we can't roll over those things. Okay, I I sit down and um, I'm a little bit sick from all the beer and the jumping. <laughs> I, I I wave over to Landris and Fergus and say, "Over to you, chaps." Yeah, you can take a tactical chunder if you want, and um, <laughs> and the other guys. <laughs> Right. Um, so we think that rolling barrels isn't really going to work so well. Oh, there's too many obstacles. I am noticing that the saws on the second one aren't moving despite there being two things on there. Mm, yeah, good point. The pressure point is triggered permanently with them on the thing there, right? So there must be a certain spot on there that triggers it, which means there must be a spot that is safe. I like that thinking. Yeah. Do we, do we have anything that would, if we were on the first square, that we could reach with, or are we going to go back to throwing things? So the first, the first square here, the the saw is broken. Okay. So we can step on that in relative safety because the saw's right here. We can see the saw. We know where it is. It's not yeah. going to come and get us. So yeah, I just jumped off that. It was fine. So let's think go. of the saw, sort of. Yeah, like halfway across like the that set. static it's mangled you know yeah the next one we could try and see like investigate the floor which is definitely something that i said about 20 minutes ago <laughs> to see <laughs> if there's any pressure points on the floor you should have <laughs> mentioned it i mean i was i was busy throwing things thorin guys thorin could have died but by the hair of his butt cheeks, managed to just about. <laughs> so I would like to investigate the second square. Sure. So if you stand on the first square. Mm hmm. Yep. As you stand on it, nothing happens. That's good to know. You're, you're obviously, you can see the, the, the uh, glint of the saw right next to you, but you're able to sort of, sort of tuck in your breathe in and, and sidle past it. Mm -hmm. You can see the second uh, um, section of the mosaic is, of course, splattered with rat blood. But if you remember the uh, layout of the mosaic, I, I, I think you guys probably would have remembered that, right? So I'd like to... Uh, is that OK for me to do that? Do yeah, you... yeah, you can make a investigation check, sure. But roll, uh, yeah, roll a d20 and add your investigation modifier. Investigation modifier is zero. It's a straight up D20 roll. Seven. Seven? There's a lot of rat blood and guts there. It looks like you can see a sun up in the sky, a sort of hill like green terrain, and maybe a, a, a river or something. Mm. Underneath the horrible shades of crimson and organs uh, rat blood 
I feel like this mosaic is meant to be, and the poem is meant to be telling us something, but I don't know what that thing is. I don't have the patience to figure it out, so I'm going to get my longbow, which I will never use, stretch it out at arm's length, and start touching the floor. Okay. Uh, do you want to sort of uh, nudge uh, um, Fergus out to one side and say... I think I'll actually rotate spots with him so that I'm not pushing him out. If he's had enough brushes with it. Yeah, yeah, sure. But <laughs> Fergus has sort of got, had a look, almost his nose touching the blood, but he can't see anything. It's, it's yeah. So you want to just sort of start going... Eh, okay, eh, about. Yeah. And, and yeah. Um, is there a particular section you want to try and go for? Uh, I'm going to go with a common theme of there being something hot. So I'm going to go for the sun. Okay. As you tap the sun the uh, saw comes out and cuts the rats into four okay I'll try the land instead then yep as you tap the land nothing happens and then I'll try the is the ocean underneath a river yeah as you tap the ocean, it cuts the rats into eighths. Okay, okay. Let's stay on the path. Yeah. I think I'll usher forward very gingerly, which is unlike me, <laughs> onto that land bit. Yeah. You Onto the, this middle section. Yeah, try my hardest not to knock any of those eighths of rats. Yeah, you're, you're, it's like you're walking across a rat tightrope. <laughs> um, uh, it's pretty slippery. It looks very. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make you make a um, ever so easy. I mean, you're. I'm tempting fate here. Surely you're going to. Uh, I'm gonna make you roll a um, uh, a stealth saving throw. So, so if you look at your, so the saving throws are up here. Yep. So you're going to roll a d20 and apply your um, uh, whatever modifier you've got for stealth. It's very slippery underfoot. There's rat guts, there's blood, there's... I feel like I've dodged a bullet because that's an 18, but I know that I, I roll with disadvantage on stealth. Oh, you do because uh, you have heavy armour. So uh, that's another d20, I'm afraid. You have to take the lower of the two. So an 18 is a good start, but... Fifteen. Fifteen, yeah. At one point, you can feel your foot sort of go whoop, whoop, like that, but uh, you're okay. You're walking on the land section, and uh, sure enough, nothing happens. As this what? is going on, I'm doing that thing that Sonic used to do when you don't move him for a while and he just taps his foot and yawns. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm just yeah. behind. So I'm just I imagine you're just thinking, bandwidth. why aren't those guys pole vaulting over? Just, yeah, to jump. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah. So um, uh, yes, you are stood on the land, in among the rat guts, but you are there's there's no source. There's no source at the minute. At the minute, yeah. After hearing Thorin say, why don't you just jump? I do ask Fergus if you'd like me to throw him. Lord of the Rings style. Toss. Toss me. Toss, toss me. me. Yeah, <laughs> toss me. We've got ten feet now. I reckon you could toss me ten feet. And Thorin can always try and catch me the other end. See? This I'll is what we need. A soft landing for you. Okay. Uh, you, you're, with permission, you're going to try and throw him. Yeah. Okay. And I, I like to think that I'm um, being thrown with style because of yeah, my... Yeah, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Like a uh, javelin. Yeah. Like, doo -doo. yeah. Sure. <laughs> Maybe even do a, a, like a it, tumble toss in the Is air. it going to be like a shot putt where you're going to sort of spin around 360 and then sort of try and just, you know... Yeah, I've like got one hand under his chest, one hand on his feet, and it's going to be a big... Sure. Uh, make a... Athletics check. Ten, ten plus four is fourteen. Fourteen. Oh, 
I'm not going to make it. Okay, it's, you, you throw him over the first one, no problem. <laughs> but he's starting to land down here quite quickly. How I, quickly can Thorin react to try yeah. and catch his friend? Yeah, I reach out, I try and catch him. Thorin, make a... Thorin, make an acrobatics check to see how quick you are to catch. Okay, I got plus three for that. Oh, five plus three, eight. You uh, stumble over your feet almost <laughs> in excitement, and unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, Fergus lands right. on here. Right. Fergus, could you make? A dexterity saving throw for me, please. A not dying throw for me, please. Okay. Oh, wrong. A not dying throw. So, again, this is going to be your saving throw here. It's going to be your dexterity. So, a d20 plus. Plus six. Okay. So, you're, you know, you're, you're a pretty, you're a monk. You're pretty good at this. You should, this should be bread and butter for you. I might can get a reroll. Oh, well, if you, if you could roll a one, that's a very good point, because you are a halfling. So, uh, yeah, roll that d20. What do you get? Da, 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 11, 17. 17. Very much like Thorin, the saw goes off, but you're able to uh, neo your way out of it, much like you were dodging those rats. As, as I hit the ground, I'm spring off again. Absolutely, yeah. It's like a, it's like watching a, uh, someone throw, I don't know, some sort of, yeah, maybe like a cat. You just sort of hit the ground, like you've seen a cucumber and just jumped out like a freaked out cat. And you, you've seen those videos, right? And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, Fergus doesn't like cucumbers. And he jumps up and sort of jumps into uh, Thorin's uh, grasp, even though Thorin is sort of stumbling over his shoes at the time. We, you we two. Have... In the you two road are way. now by these doors, and uh, Landris, you are still on the blood-stained section of the mosaic. I'm going to go back to tapping the floor with Malongo. I've seen what happens. <laughs> <laughs> no one's full. Uh, okay, what would you like to tap? Uh, if I remember the poem, it he mentions wine, drink and laughter, pass some time. It mentions water, so I'm going to tap the water. Okay, as you tap the water, that's... Uh, oh, I'm going to use my... This section here. You can see that, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, nothing happens. I'm not going to waste any time. I get straight onto that because there's no rat guts there. Yep. Uh, you're able to sort of hug the wall yep. on this sort of third. Uh and indeed, nothing happens. You're now on the final... Uh, there's five feet between you and Thorin. Now, I do remember the last bit mentioning fire, so I'm just going to tap the fire. You tap the fire, and that's this middle section here. Nothing happens. And then I'm going to stand on that spot, and there'll be enough room for myself and Thorin there, won't there, if I jump on? Yes, there, there would be, yeah. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. You jump off and you sort of share space with Thorin here. So we figured out the poem after we got through the trap. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we all turn back at that point and nod it and just go job well done. Yeah, no. But you've you've got past the uh, mosaic uh, in one piece. It was close, but you all earn some more XP. You earn 50 XP each, which by my maths now puts you on 90 XP. You are now faced with two doors. Fergus is next to one that looks ever so slightly open, and Thorin is one next to one that is closed. Two doors, two options. I would like. This feels like a good natural point to call it as a as a midpoint interval. Okay. Uh, but that was that was D and D. That was good fun. I really liked that trap at the end. That was really cool. Yeah, that was awesome. I might quickly jump back over the thing and get another beer before we call it a night. 